Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Michael Johnson. I'm a urologist at the Oregon Urology Institute, and I direct the Advanced Cancer Care Plan here. This is a pre-recorded talk. I haven't had the opportunity to hear any of the lectures, but just in looking at the program, I'm so excited to learn more about what's going on on the forefront of prostate cancer. Thanks to all the leaders who are presenting today. The topic of my presentation may be a bit of a departure from what is presented in the rest of the program. And the topic is why I think prostate cancer care not only should, but must be transformed into a digital platform. As a disclosure, I do uh, perform some consulting work for Siemens. Although I think that the work that I'm going to present today, the thoughts that I present today, extend beyond the consulting role that I currently perform with Siemens. A little bit about myself. Uh, on the right is what I look like in clinic, uh, masked up, uh, trying my best to keep coronavirus out of the way. Uh, on the left are all the educational institutes uh, to which I owe six figures worth of educational debt, or at least I've given a lot of sweat equity to. Uh, most recently, prior to my current job, I was on staff at Johns Hopkins uh, and ultimately moved across the country uh, to Oregon Urology Institute so that I could direct cancer care, and participate in what I think is an inflection point in the way prostate cancer care is performed. And what do I mean by that? Well, briefly, I think that physicians and patients are becoming overwhelmed with data. Previously, prostate cancer used to be a very straightforward process in terms of diagnosis and treatment. A rectal exam was performed, it was abnormal, or a PSA test was performed and it was abnormal. A biopsy was performed, prostate cancer was diagnosed, the prostate was removed. If it came back, hormone suppression was started. It's not that simple today. There are genomics, there are family histories, there are comparative effectiveness models, there are nomograms. Uh, there's a whole host of data that a patient and provider must deal with when making decisions. And simply put, we can't handle it all and stay updated. And I think a digital platform is going to solve this. And it's going to solve it in two ways. The first is that it's going to create an architecture to describe a patient's prostate cancer history. It will allow research to proceed around a common architecture. It will allow treatment options to be better defined because patients will be better defined. The second aspect that I think a digital platform will provide is that it will streamline clinics. Instead of physicians fact-checking data, it will allow physicians to focus more on the essence of what's being a doctor, which is the patient and physician relationship. Now, I talk about technology, and I always have to temper my enthusiasm because there are technologies that don't always work. And uh, a famous article was published previously uh, entitled Gizmo Idolatry, and I take this to heart. And a gizmo may be defined as a, a tool, a technology, or a procedure uh, for which there's not clear clinical benefit. However, there are those unicorn technologies which may not seem beneficial in the immediate time frame, but demonstrate their value 10 to 15 years uh, down the road. And we can see that in medicine. Popular culture, it's very easy to see. If we look at a company such as Google, we can see some of their failures. Google Glass, the internet embedded eyeglasses, which came out years ago and instantly failed and was ridiculed. On the other hand, there's YouTube. Uh, Google purchased YouTube for $1.6 billion in 2006, and currently it makes $20 billion a year. And so clearly, Google saw some value in that technology that others didn't. So how do we differentiate between a gizmo technology and a unicorn technology? There are multiple ways to do it, but I like to look at two separate criteria. The first is the problem that the technology solves must be solved in a way superior to the current way. And we know that computers and physicians are very strong at different things. And I do not think that computers should try and mimic physicians or vice versa. If we look at a lot of the data, computers are very powerful at organizing and filtering this, extracting data from records, interpreting nomograms, genomics. These are all the strengths that a computer can perform. However, I don't think we will ever 
develop a computer program capable of sitting down with a human and talking about the anxiety prior to prostatectomy or the path moving forward. And so I think that digital technologies and physicians must play complementary roles. And I think we can achieve that. The second criteria by which we can differentiate gizmo and unicorn technologies is that the technology must overcome barriers that current technologies provide. In this case, it's very easy to see that geographical barriers are present in modern medicine. Now with telemedicine, these are being broken down. But in essence, the academic stars who are presenting today do wonderful work to further cancer care. Yet their knowledge is hidden in the figures of a manuscript, revealed during conferences for which only the interested physicians attend, or the clinical trials are buried in a website and potentially unavailable to uh, patients and physicians. As a result, I think a digital technology can help break down those geographic barriers. Imagine if a physician could codify their thought process, their post-operative plan, the way they handle prostate cancer. If they could digitize that, then wouldn't they be able to disseminate their expertise to the greater prostate cancer community? In that way, I think that the digital platform is extremely powerful and some would say essential. Now, the interesting aspect uh, to consider is that some of the best technologies will solve a problem that many people don't even realize exists. And I would make the argument that prostate care and digital technology will solve that. If all the urologists in the nation had the same interest in prostate cancer as the attendees in this conference, perhaps a digital platform wouldn't be needed. But we know that's not true. And we need to ensure that our greater community is updated in terms of prostate cancer care. The analogy I like to use is that if the world were full of mathematicians, no one would need a calculator on their phone. But we do. And I think that in the same way, we need a digital platform for prostate cancer. Now, there are many challenges in prostate cancer. And to some degree, we can use these to see how a digital platform could help. There's risk assessment. Who is going to develop prostate cancer? And this involves family histories. It involves genetics, all of which are digital concepts that can be put into a platform for analysis. There is treatment decisions and follow-up. If we look at a timeline in terms of oncologic care, we know that when it comes to diagnosis, the availability of data is somewhat limited. For better or worse, fax machines are still used to transmit information and records are extracted manually. This should not be the case. When it comes to risk stratification, we use guidelines, but they are not quite as specific as they need to be. They're not personalized because personalization of those guidelines would take up an exponential amount of paper. And so we don't, but they should. When we talk about therapies, again, it is very important that patients understand and providers understand the guidelines so we can adhere to them. And treatment, often because of limited or incomplete information, our treatment plans may be inappropriate. And when they're inappropriate or we don't know, sometimes we may practice medicine which is a little bit more aggressive than we need to be. And it is possible that we are over-treating some of our patients. And in the prostate cancer community, over-treatment of disease is certainly uh, an important topic. Now, the role of healthcare reform, healthcare improvement, is something that has attention on the national level. We look at the U.S. policies towards healthcare reform, and we see that they want to improve quality, outcomes, and efficiency. But I would make the argument that healthcare reform, in the government sense, is not quite what is needed. When we speak of healthcare reform in the U.S., we often think of small steps, increasing insurance coverage, for example. But what I think we really need is healthcare innovation, new tools to exponentially change the way that we provide our care. And in doing so, we are going to achieve that goal of the U.S. government, uh, which is really to improve patient and provider satisfaction. Let me give you a quick example. Uh, the stars of academia who are presenting today have all of their knowledge. And how can we transition that into patient care? Well, we know that within academia, there are multidisciplinary tumor boards discussing all of their patients, coming up with best possible practices and outcomes. This is a team-based effort with radiation oncologists, pathologists, innovative imaging modalities that are emerging. 
new genomic tests, new surgical technologies. All of these are being developed in the academic centers and being tested. Wouldn't it be nice as a physician if I could capitalize on that and transition it to my patient that I see in the clinic? And I sit down with them at the exam room, look at a computer, and go over their personalized risk factors. I'm able to tell them not only what the guidelines show, but what some other options may be. In return, the patient sits down and is comforted by knowing that I am going over every possible opportunity that is available to them. Ultimately, we can decide on a treatment option and we can move forward. And as we move forward, we keep a digital record of this. We have a timeline of their PSA history, their interventions to see what has worked and what has not worked, whether they've enrolled in trials or not, what their genomic scores are. And as a result of this, we can retrospectively look back on these data and evaluate how we treated them. And in addition, we can feed that back into the academic centers and prospectively look moving ahead. So when I treat the next patient, I will have all the benefit from the patients that have preceded him. Now, I wanted to highlight some of the technologies that are emerging in prostate cancer care, but I realized that they're already being presented at this conference, and so I don't want to speak too much to that. There are wonderful progress being made in imaging and in genomics, in medical therapies. And I think that the real benefit in my mind is the opportunity that it provides me, provides others, to turn that knowledge into something that can be easily disseminated to patient care. If we look at the value of prostate cancer care, a very important topic, something uh, that we all face, there are many ways to improve it. And I think that if we look at each one of these aspects of care, it is easy to see how a digital platform can improve the way we currently provide medicine and care. Again, I want to thank the organizers of this conference for allowing me to present. I wanted to leave with two thoughts because I think, again, we're at an inflection point in, in medicine and we are presented with new technologies and how do we identify what are the unicorn technologies and what are the gizmo technologies. I think that prostate cancer care and a digital architecture around which to base all of our knowledge is important. I think that there's only going to be one opportunity like this in medicine. To echo the sentiments of Peter Thiel on the left here, every moment in business happens only once. And we can see that in medicine. No one else is going to win a Nobel Prize for a checkpoint inhibitor. We're looking at androgen receptors in prostate cancer. And I feel that right now we are at the forefront of digital medicine and it is our opportunity to improve care. And I think the benefits will be not only instantaneous, but long lasting. And I think they will be far reaching as well. I think that we're going to improve the economics of prostate cancer care. We're going to improve the outcomes of prostate cancer care. But most importantly, we're going to improve the abilities for physicians and patients to interact. Reestablishing that physician patient interaction, I think, will be the most important step that digital technologies will provide. As a provider, I think I will take great comfort in sitting down with a patient and knowing that I am offering the best possible care throughout the world and that every opportunity for my patient is, is presented to him. In addition, the patient will know that I am presenting everything and that we are not relying on my own experience. Instead, we're relying on evidence from the medical community. I think that our patients are depending on this. I think we owe it to them and I think it will be done. It can be done. It must be done. And I think at the end of the day, it will be worth it. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity to present, and I look forward to interacting with you in the future.